Hello everyone, and welcome to my seventh tutorial on how to create full stack web applications. In my previous tutorial, I covered how to integrate persistence into your application. Now, since then, I've gone ahead and developed the repositories and services we'll need in our application. Now, as we develop our client, the client part of our application, we may discover that we need additional features, but most of the features that we need should be developed, uh, and uh, we sh after this tutorial, we should be able to focus on uh, developing the client part of our application using AngularJS. Now, um, I'm going to, so the focus of this tutorial is going to be reviewing the new code and also showing up, uh, showing how to wire your application to uh, test it out on a development server. And I'm also going to be showing how to use Postman, which is a very good uh, REST client. Uh, and um, it's, it's, uh, and it's a, also a uh, Chrome extension. So I'm going to uh, start by reviewing here. So uh, we have a number of repositories and a number of methods. So uh, we're using uh, JPQL or Java Persistence Query Language to query the entities from the database. And uh, there, now I'm not going to go into depth about how um, JPA works in this tutorial, but um, basically this should be relatively uh, self-explanatory if you have a basic understanding of JPA. And um, I, I, there are many tutorials out there for covering uh, so, uh, some of the, uh, the uh, basic and more advanced features of JPA. So uh, basically this class, uh, there's a find account, all accounts method, which finds all the account entities in our database. A find account method, which finds an account by an ID. A find account by name method, which finds an account based on the name a account a create account method which creates an account based on the past data uh, we have a blog entry repo and we have a method here for finding a blog entry by id a method for deleting a blog entry by id a method for updating a blog entry now um, this if you or this is a good pattern to follow when updating an entry is to attach it to the persistence context and then set the relevant records that you want to update. This way, you don't accidentally change um, certain uh, relationships in the database by overriding the copy in the database. So this is my, the pattern I use for updating uh, entities in the database. Uh, over here, we have a uh, create blog entry. Uh, function and over here we have a method to find all the blog entries by ID. Over here we have a blog repository and we have a method to create a blog, a method to find all the blogs in our database, a method to find a blog by ID, a method to find a blog by a title, and a method to find all the blogs associated with an account. Now um, basically these repositories serve as a CRUD interface to the database, but also have um, some functions for uh, uh, some more advanced uh, functions for searching uh, the database, such as like uh, searching by name, searching by title. So uh, it's it's basically uh, interface to the database for our service layer. So uh, the service layer. Um, now we were mocking our service layer in previous tutorials, but I've actually gone ahead and made the implementations for our service layer. So over here we have an account service. And for the most part, uh, these classes proxy to the repositories, but occasionally we'll add um, uh, uh, basically some exception. Uh, we'll basically throw exceptions conditionally based on the state of the data in the database, and uh, also some other. Uh, the service layer also serves some other purpose, uh, purposes, such as uh, setting the relationships of entities relative to each other before uh, persisting them. And as you go into the future, you may add more uh, domain logic uh, to your application. But for the most part, um, it is the service layer is proxying to the uh, repositories. And so uh, to review the service layer, we have um, a find account method here, to uh, which uh, uses the find account method on our account repo. We have a create account method, which shows an exception if account cannot be found and creates the account. Uh, create blog, uh, blog uh, method which uh, set, which uh, throws an exception if the blog or account cannot be found and also sets a relationship uh, between the blog and the account uh, before persisting it. Now this is going to uh, now all these methods in the service layer are going to be wrapped inside a uh, transaction. So basically 
um, this method will be wrapped inside a transaction. And so uh, when we set owner and the transaction ends, the data will be persisted to the database. So we're going to add a transactional annotation to these classes in a moment here. Um, so over here we have a find blogs by account method. And this finds all the blogs by the account and throws an exception if the account cannot be found. Uh, find all accounts in our database and uh, method and also a find account by name method. The blog entry service implementation is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have a method for finding a blog entry, for deleting a blog entry, and for updating a blog entry. And the blog service implementation is also relatively straightforward. Uh, we throw, uh, we, uh, when we create a blog, uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, a blog entry, uh, we pass in the related uh, blog to this function, and um, if a blog cannot be found, a blog not found exception is thrown, and the blog entry is created, and the relationship is set. Over here we have a find all blogs function, which finds all the blogs in the repository, and over here we have a find blog entry list function, which finds all the blog entries related to a particular blog, and over here we have a method to find a particular blog. Uh, now, um, basically, we're going to um, want to um, uh, annotate our service classes so that they can be found by uh, Spring. So we're going to add a service annotation to each class, and we're also going to add a transactional annotation to make sure that all these methods where we're interacting with a repository uh, have, are, are uh, demarked with a transaction. So uh, putting transactional at the class level is the same as putting transactional on top of each method, but um, it requires less code. So we're going to uh, just copy this co these annotations and place them in each of our services here. And so the service annotation is uh, basically saying that this class is a singleton bean, and it's not much different from the component annotation of Spring. Uh, it just marks these classes as services so that you can uh, per uh, perhaps you can uh, select them out for uh, the purposes of AOP in, uh, if you have a desire for that functionality. So. Um, that uh, sets up our service layer, but we also need to inject our repositories into our services. So we're, go uh, we're going to add auto-wired here to our repositories. And also for blog entry service implementation, we're going to wire our repository there. And we'll wire these repositories for our blog service implementation. So um, that sets up the service layer of application. However, um, we if Spring needs to be able to find our uh, blog service services and also we need to wire them into our controllers. Now previously uh, we just injected the, the services using uh, Makito and we mocked our services but now we're going to be injecting real services so we're going to add the auto wired annotation to our controller here and also to the blog controller and also to the blog entry controller. So basically if Spring can find a implementation of the service on the class path it's going to inject the service into our controller. So we're going to modify our business config here so that Spring can find the implementations. And I'm going to add a uh, component scan here. And I'm going to reference the directory containing the implementations of our services. So I'm going to click over here and click copy reference and paste it in here. And that's the tutorial, I mean, that's the um, package containing our implementations. So now Spring should be able to find our services and inject them into our controllers. And also, one more thing you need to check is that uh, this is the proper directory that uh, Spring is finding the controllers in the proper directory. And so now we should be able to run our application and actually uh, test this in a development server. So I'm going to double click Tomcat 7 run here. Okay, uh, our server starts successfully, and I'm going to be using the Postman uh, client, REST client, to interact with our endpoints. So you want to search for Postman, and um, it will be this link here from the Chrome Web Store. And I've already downloaded it, so I can uh, use it right away. I'm going to click Launch App here. 
So uh, basically, this is a really good Rust client for interacting uh, with your endpoint and supports a lot of different things such as formatting and your your responses, uh, hyperlinking links in your responses for hate toast, and also uh, setting uh, ha having headers. Uh, uh, basically stay the same through multiple requests and one of the ways to uh, so so basically what you want to do here is you want to I, I've added a preset but let me uh, show you guys how to make a preset so that um, it makes usage of a service easier uh, so you want to click manage presets and you want to click add and I'm just going to call this um, uh, Jace uh, I'm going to call this uh, tutorial preset and I'm going to uh, set a content type here of application JSON. So this is setting the headers uh, for a preset so that we don't have to enter them every time. And then you also want to have a accept header here of application JSON. And I can submit that now. And you can see we have a tutorial preset here. So whenever we go over to our headers, uh, the uh, box containing our headers, and I type the first letters of, pre of the of the preset, we can uh, complete complete it. So uh, basically, I can type uh, tutorial preset and click this, and you can see it completes with the he the uh, headers for that we've just set. Now you can also uh, go to settings and make sure that retain headers on, uh, on clicking links is set, and this will allow us to uh, navigate Hatos and still have our head headers be. Uh, this will allow us to click the link of the Hatos links and still. Um, allow our headers to be set uh, between requests. So um, you'll want to make sure this is checked to uh, yeah, set to yes. And so I'm going to perform a request here on our REST API. And first, I'm going to just get the accounts on our res uh, on our endpoint here. So if I go ahead and click uh, do a get to uh, REST slash accounts, um, you should we should we have a list here of the accounts and currently there are no accounts in the database so what we can do is we can do a post here to uh, this resource and I'm going to set to click on raw here to set the content of the message and I'm going to set the uh, name of the account to uh, test and the password uh, to test and if I send this uh, we should get the uh, res a response from a server and you can see that it created a, a an account called test now remember we have it so that we've made this uh, so that it ignores the password field when sending data back to the client now uh, so this is the uh, resource the account resource and you can see that there are Hatos links uh, that uh, link to related resources so I can go ahead and click on this particular link to uh, transfer us to the blogs resource and I can use that to, uh, uh, and then I can send a post request here to create a blog. So you can go ahead and uh, set the method to, now if I go ahead and get this with, when there are no blogs, you can see it's empty. But if I go ahead and uh, select post here, and then set uh, set the content, I'll set the content of the uh, content here. I'm going to set a title to um, test title, or uh, let's say kitchen blog. And if I send this, uh, you can see that the resource is created and you have the relevant links here uh, pertaining to the resource. And we can even uh, navigate this to create our blog entry. So I can go ahead and click this link. And now I can uh, get from this resource and you can see that the entries are empty. So I can go ahead and click post here and set the content. And I'm going to set the content here of the name of the blog so uh, title uh, I mean the name of blog entry so I'm going to have a kitchen blog entry and I'm going to set the content to test content so if I go ahead and send this um, you can see that uh, entry is added to the list and the ID you can see at the end of the URL and if I send it multiple times I can keep on creating blog entries and the ID will be incremented. Now I can go ahead and actually look at all the blog entries I just created by doing a get to this resource. Now if I send this you can see that all the the entries exist there. I can even go ahead and modify these entries if I wanted to. I can click on an entry here and I can do a put operation and set the content uh, to new content here. So this updates that particular entry. So if I go back to uh, the entries by navigating to the blogs and then 
um, navigating to the entries, you can see um, that the uh, new content is, is added properly. So uh, basically, uh, this is a really good interface for, uh, uh, Postman is a really good uh, REST client for interacting with a HATOS enabled resource. And really, let's uh, and you can see that uh, our our backend is real, is quite a pretty robust robust and will allow us to uh, develop our uh, the client part of our application in its current form. So uh, in the next tutorials, I'm going to be in integrating uh, ng boilerplate, which is an Angular JS framework for developing client side applications, and it and um, I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, if you guys found this tutorial helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.